So I was just taking a look at a lot of shit. <clears throat> uh, for the CCNA. Um, a lot of different softwares. And um, just, uh, oh god, my mouse. Okay. Got the pointer and change it to black. You can see it. So, <laughs> they want to see uh, commands. And um, so, I need to focus on that and wasting time. I'm trying to get to, I do have the ideal uh, learning um, <laughs> material, but I'm, I have to buy it on Amazon. And, uh, Something's wrong with my Amazon purchasing. Um, <clears throat> it actually won't let me do it online uh, on the uh, on my laptop, which is very frustrating because um, I fixed this problem before. But um, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to go back to the textbook. Uh, and uh, the CLI's commands in the textbook. Um, <coughs> start looking at that because I don't have a lot of time here. Um, so I keep wasting it. So commands. Um, that is not the first. Oh, See where it goes. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, there we go. Using commands, commands, the debugging show commands. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for is commands. I want to start. Okay, there we go. ICMP echo and the ping commands. Chapter three, chapter two should have some commands. Does not. So every chapter that follows should have some commands, and that's what we're going to look at. So <clears throat> you have to know more than commands for the um, for the exam. But it's important to know that um, the. Uh, um, that the exam says that uh, commands are a significant part of it. Probably ninety, what it said, ninety percent of the exam is commands or something. We have to know a lot of commands. So let's look at chapter five. There's no commands. Six, history buffer commands, commands, logging, synchronous, exit timeout, no IP domain, uh, lookup commands. Seven. So how many chapters are there? In each chapter, are there commands? Configuring multiple interfaces with the interface range commands. Yes, remove configuration with the, uh, with the no command. So we want to use these commands. Chapter 8, nothing. 9, nothing. 10, nothing. 11, 12, 13, nothing about commands. Uh, 14, 15. Okay, nothing for... Uh, Many chapters there are 16 commands, connected routes in the IP address command. 17, 18 commands. Uh, problem isolation using the ping command, ping command basic, strategies and results when testing with the ping command. Um, so IPv4 routing commands, uh, configuring IPv4 address and static routes. 19, 20, 19 is OSPF concepts, 20, implementing OSPF commands, wildcard matching with the network command, OSPF v2 interface subcommands, 21, 22, 23, so I have to go say 23, um, 24, 25, nothing in the seat, uh, 26, uh, 27, uh, 28, 29, <clears throat> uh, 
Like I said, I need to know a lot of commands, but there's quite a number of chapters that don't need commands. Um, and so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna write that in here actually. Um, the ones I find that need commands and the ones that don't. There's about 30 chapters and uh, I do have a list right here that shows the basic commands needed um, for three different levels actually and uh, what the fuck that is, I don't have to do that. <clears throat> three different levels um, for the CCIE, Advanced Troubleshooting and Security um, nine commands, CCMP level commands, advanced routing and quality of service, that's nine, and then CCNA is about 17 commands, double the commands for configuration, routing, and switching, so the CCNA is constantly talking about uh, routing and switching, but you can see most commands are used in configuration. Um, <clears throat> Then CCNP, most are used in routing, and CCIE, most are used in troubleshooting. So the CCNA level is mostly configuration. Then one step up to NP is routing. It explores further in the routing, you can see right there. And then the CCIE probably is talking about something about routing. So the configuration probably is for, leads to the routing. Um, that's like the CCNA leading to the CCMP, and then whatever configuration and routing has any problems, any other <clears throat> more problems, that's the troubleshooting. Uh, interesting, it talks about crypto here. Um, so, um, at the CCNA anyway, um, yeah, we're mostly talking about like I said, talking about configuration, so if I'm looking at here, I should uh, expect that, expect the configuration. So, uh, in fact, I think I want to, I want to circle this. Um, highlight it in class that they're going to be looking at this Paying attention uh, looking at this mostly. So, uh, the shape here, we get a rectangle here, and we'll highlight this. Uh, and uh, I don't know what the hell it's not supposed to have. Shape, okay, there we go. Um, <coughs> so, I'm going to do the red. Uh, okay, so like I said, we are, the class is the CCNA, and most of the CCNA is this config. Um, so we should be in config mode, and <coughs> um, I should look for that also in here, so configuring This can be config commands that we're looking for. Up. Um, yeah, so I want to find the. Okay, a lot about that. Um, but if I'm looking for the. Uh, config commands, <clears throat> there's a particular way it's printed. Look. Almost there, CLI. <laughs> okay. There we go. So this is regular mode. This is the enable mode, power mode, and but there's also a config mode, and the config mode is what we want to get into, um, is 
what they're talking about is where most of the commands from the CCNA, oh, there it is right there, config. So anything that has the parentheses config, this is the, uh, mostly what the CNA, CCNA is about. Um, yeah, if I look at how many instances there are for that, uh, there are, should be a lot. It's only 57 right now. Um, probably because it's not just parentheses. So let's look at this one. See, now we got that, that match. Um, <clears throat> but that is not true for the CCNA. I mean, and P and IE. So, we're not going to touch that in this, in this, uh, in these classes. We're going to stay right here. So, I'm, the teacher told me what he wants. And so that's why I'm finding this. Uh, so, I am centralizing on what he is looking for. Um, so I've got 218 instances, um, and uh, I think I'll just jump right into this. I want to centralize on it to show that <coughs> we are on point, that there is a point here. And so what does it say? Note that, uh, note that this one exam topic has two verbs, configure and verify. For this exam topic, you should be able to not only configure IP for IPv4 addresses and subnets, but you should understand them well enough to verify that the configuration works. So, okay, so for example, this topic. So, again, so this topic, the CCNA 200-300 exam content for Cisco. This is Cisco authorized. So, <clears throat> this is like Cisco approved. Um, and so what they said is, you shouldn't only be able to configure, but you should also understand them well enough to verify that the configure works. It's not only enter the commands, but also verify that the command you entered works. It's working. Uh, in contrast, the following exam topics ask you to describe the technology, but does not ask you to configure it. Describe the purpose of first hop redundancy protocol. Okay, so configure and verify. So the primary exam topics each list one or more verbs that describe the skill level required. Okay, so configure and verify is what we're dealing with. Describe, uh, not right now. Um, the earlier configure and verify IPv4 addressing so it does not mean that you should know how to type commands but have no clue as to what you configured. You must first master the conceptual exam topic verbs. The progression runs something like this. Describe, identify, explain, compare, contrast, configure, verify, troubleshoot. So what they're going to, what the student is going to ask is like, okay, well, I'm configuring, we're telling them to configure <coughs> and you know, first it's going to be configure, and then it's going to be verify, but then they will be asking, well, what comes, why am I doing this? You know, did it work? That's the verify, but why am I doing this? Is the describe, identify, explain, compare, contrast, <clears throat> which came before the configure, verify, and that's where describe comes in here. Actually, we should understand what it's saying is you should understand the contents of the exam first before you try to do the commands. But the Chinese teacher, <coughs> Mr. Wang, just wants to go right into the commands and have them working on it. So, <clears throat> I can't stop him from doing, but the point is that uh, <coughs> the exam is saying that if you're entering commands you should know why you're doing it and that requires you to learn the rest of the exam before you actually use the command. Okay, so I, I, I don't know
know how they're gonna do that, but this is this I need to like I said centralize on the config. So here is a navigating between different configuration modes. Here's the first piece right here. Um, configuration sub modes. Oh, configuration mode itself contains a multi multitude of commands. To help organize the configuration, iOS groups some kinds of configuration commands together. To do that, when using configuration mode, you move from the initial mode, global configuration mode, into sub-command mode. So there's there are different <coughs> sub-config modes. Um, so let's put that in here. Let's, let's jump in. Okay, so anyway, uh, config sub config sub commands. Like so there's the enable and configure, so user enable configure and even in here there are sub uh, modes so there's global configuration mode sub command modes context setting uh, commands with you from one configuration uh, <coughs> sub command mode of context to another these context setting commands tell the switch the topic about which you will into the next few configuration commands. More importantly, the context it tells the switch the topic you are uh, that you care about right now. So when you use question to get help, the switch gives you help about the topic only. <coughs> context setting is not a statistical term; it's just description here to, to make sense of configuration mode. The best way to learn about configuration submodes is to use them. Uh, but first, take a look at these upcoming examples. For instance, the interface command is one of the most commonly used context setting configuration commands. For example, the CLI... <coughs> okay, so do we have interface here? Yeah, we do here. So config line, we're on the config line and then interface uh, is a sub-config. So these must be the um, sub-configs and it jumps into here. Um, and uh, so I'm going to put that. This is the first one, right? So um, CLI, what we have, I don't know what this is. It's probably not the switch. Um, and the switch is less of the work, right? <coughs> is this the switch? Yeah, okay. So there's less to do on there, I guess. So, because I named the switch mic, so um, I'll put config here, terminal. Um, invalid, um, invalid input detected marker. <coughs> Why? I am not in uh, the enable mode. Okay, so I'm able now configure terminal. Now I'm in config. Uh, now um, I want to change the host name. Okay, and then we did that, we changed it from Mike to Fred. There we go, line console uh, zero. And it's gonna go through all of this stuff. So um, so in class, the first step I will do is this one. Um, this will be the first thing we review. We start reviewing. And I'll pull this up. Um, I'll just put like page 152 or something. Yep, obviously, it's going to detect it. Uh, okay, so could, uh, obviously we know where we are, but volume 1, page 152, because we're not going into. Um, no, I mean, volume 2 actually is CC. So, um, 
For example, CLI uh, user could interface configuration mode by entering interface fast Ethernet 01 configuration command. Uh, so interface, asking for help in interface configuration mode displays only commands that are useful when configuring Ethernet interfaces. Commands used in this context are called subcommands or in this space case, in the specific case, interface subcommands. <coughs> when you begin, but we have to know what the <coughs> what is in that environment, and they should have explained it earlier. So that's what's meant by by that by described or whatever. Commands are useful when configuring Ethernet interfaces. Commands used in this context are called subcommands. Uh, interface subcommands. When you begin practicing with the CLI with real equipment, the navigation between modes can become natural. For now, consider example four four, which shows the following: movement from enable mode to global configuration mode by using the configure terminal. Ex exec command using a host name Fred <coughs> global configuration command to configure the switch's name movement from global configuration mode to console line configuration mode using the line console zero okay so let's try that out um, so I put line console zero what happened uh, okay config line uh, so we ch you see change to config line uh, setting the console's simple password to hope using the password hope line subcommand. Okay. So now I'm going to change the password. It's password to hope. So we're still on config line. Okay. We can change the password. Then movement from console configuration mode to interface configuration mode using the interface type number command. So now we change from console configuration mode to interface configuration mode. Interface fast Ethernet 01. So what happened? <clears throat> it went to if. It, it shouldn't have been on if. No. Um, yeah, that was, that was the first one. So, setting the speed at 200 Mbps for interface fast Ethernet 01. So, I'm on fast Ethernet. What What is fast Ethernet? <clears throat> um, it, it said up here interface. When I hit internet interface, uh, interface configuration mode by entering interface fast Ethernet 01, a command. Um, configuring Ethernet interfaces. Right? So what is an Ethernet interface? That's what I'm trying to get at. Okay. If I try to see a picture of it, Let's see. Circuit board. Okay, so I'm going to talk to the circuit board or configure some parameter uh, setting on the circuit board itself. Uh, that is, so where is that circuit board? Could be in a switch in the switch or router. So I'm talking to actual components actually in the switch, not just the switch, but components in the switch. Uh, <coughs> And that's what this is, IF. If. Um, change the speed, setting speed 100 Mbps for interface using the speed 100 interface subcommand. Okay, so what if I want to change the speed to 10 uh, megabits per second, or 1 megabit per second? Let me change the speed to 2 megabits per second, see what it does. Invalid input parameter. Why? I don't know. But if I change it to 100 megabits per second, which sounds like a default value, then it's okay. How about I change it to 10? 
It's okay. So I can reduce the speed. And I'm not sure if that actually wants to confirm that the like pinging it or something you want to confirm, validate that the speed actually is 10 megabits per second. That would cause some problems. Um, but uh, let's see if I if see if I put it on three, then again it's a <coughs> let's try nine. So anything less than ten. Um, how about I put it on a thousand? Uh, no. So between ten to hundred, it looks like, right? <coughs> I'll keep it at ten using the speed hundred interface sub command. Moving from interface configuration mode back to global configuration mode using the exit command. So exit. I don't want to talk to that small uh, component in the switch. I want to go to global now, um, and I am back in global. <coughs> Um, not getting between different configuration modes, the text inside parentheses, uh, the command prompt identifies the configuration mode. For example, the first command prompt after you enter configuration mode list config, meaning global configuration mode. After the line console zero command, the text expands to config line, meaning line configuration mode. Now, It gets to the point where you don't want to do this. Uh, you can do this per component, or you can do this on a enterprise scale, <coughs> affecting many devices at a single time, and that's where you would use uh, Annexter or uh, or Puppet. Uh, I believe it's called Annexter. Isn't it? <coughs> no, no, not it's not Annexter. I get it mixed up with the, another name. Um, Ansible. Ansible. Is, right? Because it sounds like answer. Answer to me. <laughs> Which is exactly what, what you're doing. Uh, yeah. So this um, can hit um, an enterprise level of devices. can do this. Change the parameters on, on enterprise level. Many number of devices at, one, at a single time. So... <clears throat> Um, that is definitely worth knowing how to do. Um, <laughs> as the text implied parentheses in the command prompt that has configuration mode, for example, the first command prompt after each configuration mode list config, <coughs> meaning global configuration mode. After the line console zero command, the text expands to config line, meaning line configuration mode. Um, so very interesting. Uh, what I'm thinking right now is actually the configs. Uh, very easy to get through this. Uh, about 20% of point one. Going through the config commands, <coughs> um, and about 10% finished with the configs. Getting through the config commands. So that's very easy, but Maybe think this idea of <coughs> um, again working backwards, and uh, you know what's the point? It's very easy to see what is the point actually of these uh, Cisco certificates, the CCNA and the CCMP, CCIE, working backwards. Um, I could see that all of this was building up to, um, it's leading to the the, conf the config is leading to the routers, uh, sometimes the switches, but more the routers. And so then in the routers, there's the troubleshooting problems <coughs> at CCIE level. What are they troubleshooting? If we look in here for uh, what is being troubleshooted, um, it's probably it's probably on the router. Um, and if we look at the <coughs> security, um, also is the next after CCIE. You look in here. What is it talking about? Access control lists. Um, what information can get through? Um, and also uh, <clears throat> the data, what data is, can get through, what cannot, uh, what is encrypted, the data, encrypting the data, um, and <clears throat> the last one, uh, VPNs, configured crypto, uh, crypto maps and VPNs. Um, so um, what are we talking about here? It's really uh, VPN traffic, uh, making sure it's, uh, uh, and I mean at the CCIE level. <coughs> so, in my opinion, the CCIE 
the Cisco CCIE, the main point that they're working with is <coughs> VPNs, um, encrypting the network, um, <coughs> um, writing permissions, uh, or, or even like firewalls and blocking blocking um, data, but uh, <coughs> uh, also the VPN traveling through the routers. Uh, the OSPF finding the shortest paths uh, on the routers um, <coughs> and that looks like um, what I'm looking at right now um, so I found that there's something called the, 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 the CCAR so it's the certified architect <coughs> and um, but I think that this was um, returned to the CCIE, under the CCIE, um, and I've been looking for that, uh, but um, this is uh, supposed to be the highest level of Cisco certification, uh, since there's currently 10 CTR certified professionals in the world, so this is uh, um, not very many, but if we ask uh, how many people have uh, a CCIE, um, so yeah, I haven't been able to find it, but uh, like I said, it seems that it existed, but then I went back under the the CCIE. <coughs> um, in fact, I can't even find a Cisco, I mean CCAR on the Cisco OC uh, training certifications here. And if I look under it, <coughs> let's look under really fast and see what it has. You see what we've got. We've got three here. Um, <coughs> so, you know, the expert is supposed to be after um, expert architect. <coughs> um, and uh, so here's the expert here, got the IE, there's the DE right there. Design is the architect, but do you see a CCAR? No. <coughs> so it's it's the DE uh, design. Um, it's that one. Um, <coughs> so again, we don't see it, but anyway, whatever whatever Cisco is doing, whatever the purpose of, the main purpose of, of Cisco Networks is, and the certification, and those, uh, <coughs> those workers, um, that is under expert, um, and that's why you're getting these other certificates so you can get eventually to that point, which is the main purpose of doing this <coughs> type of job in the first place. Anyway, so I thought DE was the top one, um, but um, we cannot. I, I can compare these other ones. Um, so we've got uh, collaboration data center, structured wireless security service provider. Uh, professional implementer routing and switching. <coughs> so again, CCT routing and switching probably is really close to a very good one. Uh, although these are additional terms, so we want to stay in here. Uh, <coughs> want to stay in here. Um, so let's look at DE because I heard that I heard DE was. Designing complex network solutions. <clears throat> so it says designing complex network solutions, but it seems that um, it's at least Bard. When I asked Bard, um, it said that uh, <clears throat> CCIE is really dealing with it. I mean, right here, you know, you've got the VPN right here, right? Um, so. Um, First part is troubleshooting. Why isn't it? Is it getting through the network? Why isn't it getting through the network? And then the security uh, <coughs> VPN. So is the VPN getting through the network? Is it? Why isn't it? And so on. How can it, how can we get it through this VPN? <coughs> so what what is VPN? It's the encryption of data, um, and also the the the, the blocking. The access control is blocking of data or permitting data, recognize, filtering data to block or permit. <coughs> so while the IE will teach you those concepts, 
the DE will <clears throat> um, enable you to design uh, the network's uh, <clears throat> architect. So it's your archi architect complex enterprise networks of those types. So this is this is uh, <clears throat> my opinion. What I'm looking for. Uh, I mean the the point of the Cisco exams is that. Uh, so likewise, the CTNA started here uh, <clears throat> in enterprise. Uh, so. I think it would be safe to state in this um, this area. CyberOps is also a, a good one, but you see in the expert level, there's nothing there for I think because that goes to security probably. Um, <coughs> uh, so CCMP security here uh, for CCNA, nothing. So I would I would tend to stay right here on this enterprise level, uh, CCNA and then CCMP enterprise, and then. Uh, CCIE enterprise infrastructure. Um, I will probably do that. Uh, the good news is that there's no requisite. You don't need to get a CCNA or CCNP before the CCIE. So what I would I would definitely get the CCIE enterprise infrastructure. <clears throat> if there was a way to study for that and pass it, I would just go straight for that. Um, So again, you see what here, right? Where it says CCDE, where you should get pride your, with CCIE and CCDE shirts, right? So again, the CCDE is the architect that supposedly it's either one of these. It's the highest that is the highest location, the DE or IE. That's why they put the E here with IE because um, <clears throat> it's either one of those. If you have the CCIE and you want to go even even further, even more, then you know you look at the DE. Um, <clears throat> So, let's check that out. What's the prerequisite? I think that's no prerequisites for these either. It's just uh, take the qualifying exam. <coughs> CCDE written. Qualifying exam earns a, a, a specialist certification so you can get recognized for your accomplishments along the way. Second, take the eight hour practical exam, CCDE V3 practical. <coughs> One of which can is to select providing the flexibility and good topics related to your area of expertise in addition to validating core enterprise architecture technologies. CEV 3.0 practical exam will be delivered at Cisco Certification Centers. Um, take the qualifying exam, take the practical exam. Um, so I believe that if you <coughs> maybe maybe they encourage you to take the DE and the IE just to, you know just in case, just to show uh, a person really knows what he's talking about, but uh, it looks like that you could just pass the exam <coughs> and get the certificate. Um, you don't need to get previous exams, so uh, that's a good idea. Um, so what are the what are the points of the IEDE? Um, it looks like the uh, 
the CCAR, CCDE is kind of invalid. You could have a lower salary as well um, than the CCIE. So <clears throat> the traditional CCIE um, looks like it would be the, bit, the best bet um, just going for a standard CCIE. Um, <clears throat> and uh, that appears, again, like I said, uh, to be something like VPN management. Uh, that would indicate that VPN is uh, VPN serves is very good money. <clears throat> also, jobs like optimizing, uh, making faster networks, um, would be very good, very good job too. Obviously, those would be enterprise uh, networks at scale. Yeah, so here I'm on, um, this is the Switch uh, CLI, um, and uh, so I'm going through um, another uh, Switch uh, command, uh, commands, um, and then to tracking that with the PBTs, um, but most commands uh, with uh, routers, so I know that I'm not doing a lot of work until I'm in, until I'm working on <coughs> commands for routers, number one, number two, um, the next step after that will be um, uh, fixing problems, troubleshooting problems. The commands will be uh, for troubleshooting routers. And then number three, the commands will be for optimizing the network paths, the OSPF, the shortest path, or uh, encryption. Um, <clears throat> so, um, and uh, those could be part of the troubleshooting. Uh, my guess is that the encryption and the um, testing that works for shortest path, what are the problems with it, is the data getting through, um, and so on, um, <coughs> will be part of the troubleshooting. <laughs> this is just my guess. Uh, but it will lead to, my, my other guess is that ultimately it will lead to encryption um, of data uh, and speed of data, of speed of travel through uh, routers specifically and handling problems in routers to facilitate that. <coughs> so this one example is why is it going into if because it is on a specific um, VLAN, uh, virtual LAN, it's a sub-config um, sub-network or sub-configuration of the global configuration. Um, so config if IP address, what am I doing on this sub configuration? Um, IP address DHCP, uh, no shutdown. <coughs> uh, so right here, uh, enter VLAN 1 configuration mode using the interface VLAN 1 global configuration command and enable the interface using and enable you in the interface using the no shutdown command as necessary. Assign an IP address and, and mask using the IP address and DHCP interface subcommand. So we assigned an IP address to the VLAN. Um, the VLAN is on this switch. Um, uh, so if there are different IP addresses, we'll know which one is VLAN. Um, we can pull up the, the, the technical support for it also, the logs to show which IP is the VLAN. Um, and then um, <coughs> no shutdown. Um, the enabling interface. Okay, so no shutdown, and then Control Z to exit the config sub and and, and sub config. Uh, so now we're back at uh, the enable mode. Um, And here's supplementary information about what we just did. It says, uh, you can always look at the configuration using the show running config command. Uh, Second, so you can look at the IP address and mask information using the show interfaces VLAN X command. So let's do that. Um, so show interfaces VLAN, we, we entered VLAN 1. So we want to put to show, show interfaces VLAN 1. So we can see what we just did. And I think that's the config and verify, so the verify part. So we did config, and now we're going to configure and verify. So now we're going to verify. Um, okay, so let's show DHCP <coughs> lease. Um, 
Chris Emma. Let's make sure we are on. So I put show DHCP lease, but we, I didn't get any information um, from that, any IP from that. So um, although I did enter the DHCP command right here, I, IP address DHCP, we did assign one, so it should have leased, and we should have gotten the uh, an IP for that. Um, I'll continue with the next uh, command here. Show interfaces VLAN one, and see if that works. So I did get some information from that. Um, oops. Uh, I'll make sure that I didn't enter that command right. So, let's see if I, okay. So it's the same thing. Okay. Um, <clears throat> VLAN one is up. Line protocol is up. Let's see what it says. Yeah. Line protocol is down. Um, so, did I actually install the DHCP, the IP address DHCP? Um, let's try to do it one more time and see. Yeah, I still couldn't get it to work, so. The VLAN worked though. Um, <clears throat> my protocol is down. Um, let me see what it is again. Uh, VLAN is line protocol is down. Hardware CPU interface. Hi, see, hardware is ether SVI. Uh, address is addresses. Internet address and T T one so no internet address. Lines made for brevity, yeah. So it should it would say all this other stuff, but for some reason I don't have a DHCP. Now uh, one reason could be because uh, on the packet tracer I'm not uh, connected to the switch is not connected to a PC, um, physically or logically connected to a PC. So let's say for example if I just use a laptop and connect the switch to this laptop. Um, then there could be a possibility for uh, a server uh, connection, the, the laptop acting as a server. So I can do an auto connect uh, from switch to laptop. Now we've got this. Um, <clears throat> and I'm not going to put the router in there for now, um, but now let's. Um, I still have the same CLI for this, um, the same iOS. So um, we do have that connected now, and so I think it's uh, running through its um, policies. And then we'll try to um, run those uh, commands again and uh, see if it will give an IP address DHCP. Um, but if just installing a VLAN on a... Is it possible to just install a VLAN on a switch? Um, right? Or does VLAN need a server, a physical server? Yes, yeah, so that didn't matter. And if you see the logical connection here, um, uh, I connected uh, laptop to switch and uh, still is doing anything. But there is something here that says, uh, finally, if using DHCP, uh, use the show DHCP command. But um, that implies that we may not be using it. Um, if I use show running config, it will show me the assessment it will show me the VLAN's uh, IP address. Uh, let's see if I, I'll check for VLAN. Show running config. Version 2 now service timestamps log debug. Uh, Ghost name Emma, spanning trees. Uh, fast Ethernet dot more. It's going to go more. And it's going to go through like 20. Okay, so interface VLAN 1, IP address DHCP. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so more. Anything else? VTY04, these are Telnet. That's Telnet and Int. So, um, I think it's saying like, well, 
I want the address to use DHCP, but we haven't set up DHCP yet, so it's not showing, not showing it. Um, um, I guess they 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 did um, set up DHCP here, so it is showing it. There's actually more information about DHCP, why it's not working. Um, so DHCP means Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. Automatically assigns IP address and other configuration settings uh, to devices on network. So did the VLAN receive a DHCP? Um, if it didn't, if it was not um, dynamically uh, configured um, by the host, then uh, it will not uh, <coughs> print uh, an IP address and it shows, it says, talks about that right here, uh, it says if you use DHCP and it fails, the show, the interface VLAN X command will not list an IP address and this is what happened, so that's the result we got. Uh, uh, it says uh, it takes a little extra effort to make sure you know whether the address is statically configured or DHCP learned on the VLAN interface, so obviously <coughs> it is not DHCP learned on the VLAN interface, so um, we need to, it needs to be statically configured, because we didn't get, that's part of the configure and verify. Um, we, we learned that now. So the thing I was doing here is that you show, here's the control Z, that's the, uh, this one, control Z, and it's control Z, just read closer, that's all we call it, right? So, I'm kind of reading backwards, <clears throat> Better to read backwards than, than not, right? So, uh, like I said, the DHCP was not working, so you signed statically how. This is how the step came. It was before it, 6-7. Uh, so, configure terminal, interface, VLAN 1 again. Boom, back down into the sub configure uh, IP address and typing it in statically. One nine two one six eight dot one dot two hundred subnet. What is the subnet for? <coughs> IPv6. In case you have more addresses, more locations, more devices. So <coughs> subgroups, right? Okay. So we put that in. Uh, and no shutdown. No shutdown means don't stop using it. Um, interface VLAN 1, change state to setup, so um, did, it, what, did it do anything? So I've got my, yeah, I don't actually have any print, I don't have the print there. So I'm just going to put the exit, I'm going to assume it did. Um, then IP default, uh, but we want to verify, because uh, when we configure, we want to verify the next thing we want to do is verify. So let's say one, one. Um, now, where am I now? So the, that was the IP address for the sub config, and now for the global config, um, a new, another IP address without any sub. So interesting right there, right? Um, and now what? So. Um, no shutdown, I was just talking about no shutdown here, um, also look at the messages that appear just below no shutdown command, uh, and to administrate enable an interface on a switch, use a no shutdown, so to administrate and enable an interface on a switch, use the no shutdown interface subcommand, to disable an interface, use the shutdown interface subcommand. This command can be used on the physical Ethernet interfaces that the switch uses to switch Ethernet messages. <clears throat> in addition to the VLAN interface shown here in this example. Uh, it's going to be used on VLANs and also physical LANs. Um, those messages are syslog messages generated by the switch, stating that the switch did indeed enable the interface. So we didn't get those, um, and I am on the switch, but um, it's not. it seems like it's not enabling uh, IP addresses on it. This is like the second time I tried to do something. Uh, but um, again, we want to. How else can we verify 
by using the uh, the the show running config, the interface uh, show interfaces VLAN X. Um, we did. I just did install um, an IP address. So show interface VLAN one, um, and we got nothing. So what that means is that <coughs> something's going on uh, with the switch that's not letting me assign um, IP addresses to it. So I don't know what I need to turn on. Um, um, it's probably a step that I haven't, uh, that I didn't do. Um, <coughs> um, show IP, let's, let's, we can go back up into these uh, other commands. Let me get out of there. Show IP SSH. Okay, configure console console disabled SSH disabled. Um, it should be enabled. Version one point nine nine. Please read RSA keys uh, to enable SSH v two. Authentication timeout. Okay, so awesome. running. That could be part of it, um, and to make sure that I'm. Uh, that I switched on whatever was supposed to be switched on before I get to the next step. It seems like that's how I have to actually use this book. Um, there could have been something I had to switch on first um, before I started assigning IPs. Uh, and so... I'm not sure that belonged to another switch. I was using another switch and then I, and then I stopped, so that could be part of it. Yeah, so I think this is part of the problem right here. It says no SSH version two v two server connections running or v one server connections running. So that do like there's no there's no server connections. Um, so uh, am I? Yeah, for example, um, for example. Um, let me click this and see if I I don't have a CLI on the on the on the um, this PC um, network devices switches uh, clubs um, any of these uh, ah server okay forget the laptop let's let's connect to the server and see if that does it. Okay, so there's no CLI in here, so just being clear that the only Cisco IOS that I can get is on a switch, but now it's connected to a server. So now let's try and all, all these uh, these uh, server-related commands we're doing. Okay, so we've got a connection. Uh, should be almost ready. Let's try DHCP at that point. I mean, um, I think this book said that I can start anywhere I want. Um, but I'm starting to think that it needs to be, uh, especially with the commands, the commands depend on the preceding commands. Uh, so there's only one way to practice this book, and that is, oh, let's see, there's no confirmation after that entered. So um, I think that it didn't, uh, it still didn't install. So if I control C out here, um, you can have a config, configure line change to stay out, configure line change to stay up, configure from console to console. Yeah. So, there's still nothing. Um, and 
and we can't confirm that by um, doing the show um, interfaces VLAN uh, one. Uh, well, no, no, not not that one. Um, uh, IP addresses I'm looking for. Um, line protocol is up. Okay, that's good. Um, show running config show running for system VLAN. Um, oh yeah, the show DHCP lease. Um, anything? Nothing. Um, same thing. Um, let's do a manual configure. Because <laughs> I didn't do that in order. Um, <clears throat> to the sub. Sub configure. Um, assign the IP address directly. should have said change the data up, but it was already up, so... From the, uh, from the other uh, prompt before it. Alright, so according to that, I mean, we should have some Have an IP somewhere. Let's try to show IP um, default gateway. I just assigned that. Just assigned it, and it's nothing showing. It's not showing anything. Default gateway. Nope. Um, So everything's okay as long as it doesn't need to show the IP. <laughs> as long as the IP doesn't need to work, so that's not working. Um, yeah. Oops. So, my 198. Um, config, let's keep working with the config, seeing what we can work with config. There's a reason why it's not working, because we obviously missed something um, before it, um, missed a parameter, a setting before it, uh, but that's fine. Um, that's what we'll, we have to save time, so that's what we're just going to deal with. Um, so here's your do labs config, config labs, but the problem is that uh, this, uh, let, let's see where config labs is. That would be good practice. That's good practice. Um, but the config labs needs me to log in or something, and then can't do it. That's why I'm not at it. Okay, I found it here, config labs here. Labs. Go to the top menu on every page and look at the options under Lab and Q and A.
I think I found it. Labs, config labs. These are also the chapters here. What is in these chapters? Um, one to eight, very good. Um, for example, let's just go to RSQP, see what's in here. What's it gonna do? That's what I want to see. What's it gonna do? Config labs. There's the config labs. Labs. Answer four, question four. This is 2014, this is like 10 years ago. 2020, oh, 2021, this was a few years ago. Let's check it out. L2, RSTPs. Why RSTP is like uh, OS, like the shortest, the shortest path, RSTP um, is, is an AI type automated uh, shortest path. See, so you, you have an option to use static regression or dynamic protocols, DHCP, LACP, PHP, ASLAP, so I decide on these three. Either channels. Uh, Config lab. So I am looking at these, but I think this is a little bit of distraction and supplementary. Um, the best thing is going to be to just stay with the ebook again. Um, and uh, learn as learn whatever I can the first uh, uh, time through, and um, if required, uh, learn it step line by line, step by step, uh, procedurally in that chronological order, uh, because it's possible that uh, the parameters depend on um, uh, earlier parameters uh, already uh, set. So. Uh, so again, uh, so config labs, yeah, they are there, they're accessible, but um, it's more information I think that needed. What's needed is just what I have in the ebook here. Mm -hmm. So this is a good part, speaking of the ebook, this is a good part right here, command references, um, uh, reviewing commands, um, but the commands are not being used real time. Um, so I'm gonna pass on this also. Also, um, um, the uh, it's not config. Uh, these commands could be for anything, not just config. And I am uh, configuring, so I am looking for config commands uh, right now. Um, first, that also may be why some things are not working because uh, there are other commands that were used earlier that are not configure commands, but they are. Uh, parameters uh, that were established, that were set, uh, that the configure commands would be referencing later. I, I am not sure that that could be part of it. Definitely something like this, that's establishing passwords on some network. I'm not going to use that because um, if I got to get that, I'm going to get stuck on the, on the switch last time that happened. I just deleted the switch and started over. So you can see this is recurring command references again. Um, like I said, uh, nice uh, review of what are uh, the commands, like the scripto key generate RSA, global command creates and stores in a hidden location in flash memory, the keys required by SSH, uh, transport input, VT, VTY line configuration, what are these things like VTY, changes the context of VTY configuration mode for the range of VTY lines, what are VTY lines? So sometimes I have to go to, you know, to go, unless I open another ebook, if I can't find it, but if I say like, what are, it's just easier to ask uh, LM, what are VTY lines in um, in uh, Cisco iOS CLI? Um, yeah, it'll just tell me really fast, right? If I'm specific enough, it knows. VTY lines, see, virtual teletypes. Um, 
So are they exclusive to the I saw them in uh, in uh, Telnet. Is it exclusive to Telnet? Uh, so we've got Telnet right here. See, they are essentially virtual ports that allow for remote access to the network device, most commonly through protocols like Telnet and SSH. Right. So VTY is with Telnet and SSH. Telnet is insecure. SSH is not secure. SSH is secure, and <coughs> like that scares me. Of like, it even says if Telnet is around, uh, like exclude it. Um, if you're looking, if you need to be secure, have secure communication, and you know, let's say you've got three, um, a three three uh, communication lines together, all in one. Mm -hmm. um, that that could compromise. Uh, you know the secure line that's there just because Telnet is present um, so it's uh, better to exclude Telnet um, than to leave it um, than to compromise your other uh, communication networks <clears throat> so I've noticed at this point I'm just picking up stuff as fast as I can at this point um, and so the PBT I know that um, I was at uh, 6 7 here um, no, six eight. Um, yeah, I wanted to write a note about this, but um, so here I'm at seven one. So I will. Uh, I know where I left off, and I'll add this. Start here. Also, what I like about this is that this is config and also a key topic. So you see the command. A lot of the command lines are not key topics, but the config is key topic. So we know that the the LLM at least is doing its job, right? Um, it told me that these are the critical points, uh, mostly about CCNA, is the config commands, and uh, we do see that reflected in the ebook. So exactly what it says: configuring and verifying switch interfaces. Uh, uh, this is a small part of the switch, um, so we want to configure, and then we want to verify that it was configured. So we can we. Uh, once configure the terminal and it's not letting me go in. Uh, um, I need to I need to get in um, get in first uh, but I need to enable okay so I get in enable first and then I configure. So I'm in an interface. Um, and I believe if means interface fast, like interfast, interface fast, Ethernet. Um, so duplex, full, um, change state to down, align protocol on interface fast, and change state to down. So I don't know if it was supposed to do that. Um, I don't have that output here, but let's see what happens after that. So speed is 100, uh, 100 megabits per second. Yes, we can control the speed. Uh, description printer uh, on third floor. I'm giving a description to it. So this is very much like Linux. Except even simpler. Invalid input at marker. Oops, yeah, that's right, I misspelled it. So we increased the data transfer speed on the printer on the third floor. That's what that was. Um, Fine. Um, exit. Interface range. Uh, so you remember you saw those from zero zero to zero eleven to twenty. Uh, now what is this? Not validated. Command rejected. 
Uh, interface range, fast you command, 0, 11, 20. I just asked Bard why this didn't work, and it told me it repeated itself. Give me a copy of what is correct. Give me a copy of what's incorrect for what is for correct. So I think that if I can't get it the first time right away, then I'm just gonna I'm just gonna move on. Um, I don't have time. <coughs> so. Oh, well, now I gotta run the config, show running config later, and it showed those IP addresses that I set up. Uh, so, uh, but, uh, these zero ones, these, uh, these interface fast ethernets, usually it shows zero one to fifteen or something. It does not show that now, uh, and it's showing instead zero. Uh, slash one, one slash one, two slash one, three slash one, so that's why I couldn't assign uh, <coughs> the zero to eleven to twenty. Uh, that's fucking crazy, I think. It's it's kind of like, it's, I don't know if this is a software glitch, um, I just read something online that said that, oh, well, it won't do that with the real hardware, they had a software glitch, and it, they said it wouldn't do that with the real hardware. So to me, this sounds, this, this sounds like a, looks like a hardware, I mean, a software glitch. Uh, with the uh, <clears throat> with the uh, the Cisco packet tracer, um, I'm trying to run commands and it's not letting me for um, parameters that it had before, and um, <clears throat> it tells me that it didn't. You know, and then in another case, it it tells me that I didn't set a parameter, but when I go back and I check later, uh, it says that I have set the parameter. So I think this is a uh, this looks like a Cisco packet tracer um, bugs um, problems. So um, definitely, um, probably again, the ebook is probably right, and we should stick with that as a base as a baseline. Um, I'm pretty sure that this is that this is right, and it probably would work a lot more with the hardware than with the soft test softwares like Cisco packet tracer.